We're in a thawing moment here at the very end of December. More freaky warm weather, mid 50s today. Rained really hard and was super windy last night. I don't know if I should keep calling it freaky weather, it's just strange weather is the norm. I'm guessing most of you know that by now. Um, I wanted to geek out a little bit on a water feature here and talk about the evolution of how water enters this and how I'm diverting silt and water from this and using this as a last ditch pond. I talked about the construction of this pond in another video, which I'll link to here. But what I'd like to do is start at the top of the watershed that feeds into this and discuss some minor adjustments that I've been making. I'm realizing it'd be maybe a little too long of a video if I start at the very, very top of the watershed that feeds that pond. Um, but I'll point off and kind of gesture at it with my explaining hand. <laughs> um, that's due west, due north, and what happens is as the landscape goes to the north, it pitches downward ever so slightly and then starts coming eastbound. So it's an east-facing, northeast-facing slope, and it tends to be quite wet on the far west end of the property. And so what I like to do is be able to drain out the excess water, but have silt catches and mini ponds throughout and as you can see, lots and lots of hugel mounds that the water can interact with and be wicked into when it's dry. But by and large, we're dealing a lot with excess water in this landscape. So you can see this trench that's been cut and evolved. And each year I go a little bit deeper, not much wider. But now we're starting to add in the complexity. And this is the stream, the waterway that feeds that pond in the first shot. And what my hope is, is that in pulse events, excess water, thawing events, the like, there are enough uh, thirsty and hungry plants in proximity to this to wick up as much water and nutrient before it reaches that pond, which is a low point in the landscape. So the complexity that's starting to be added is along the northern bound of the property, each of these cuttings, every two feet, is a hardwood stake of elderberry. I put in elderberry every two feet and then willows every one foot between varieties of elder and then elder, and then uh, hybrid poplar. And what the overall design will be is that this waterway, which runs, every time I trench it out, I can throw that water or that uh, silt and nutrient to those elders, or more likely, I'll be planting black currants, red currants, white currants right along here so that the muck can go to those. So it's a way to harvest the nutrient out of the waterway, which I've talked about extensively. The middle area is now open to be developed into trees, so there'll be persimmons, uh, there are some chestnuts and hazelnuts in there, uh, more overstory canopy elements. But the idea is to flank this waterway with as many valuable plants as possible. You can see the transition there from elders to curly willow cuttings. It took about two hours to plant about 300 cuttings, so we'll see how that works. And with the rain that came last night, this is a very active waterway. And what I'm seeing that tells me that things are working overall is there is clarity to the water. Uh, general metric that I use is the clearer the water, the more I know uh, nutrient is settling as much as possible, or at least there's not a heavy soil load in the water. And with all the roots and rock bumps, Everywhere there's a disturbance or a blockage in the waterway, it's a chance for silt and stones and nutrient. In fact, you can see stones from a heavy rain that washed, they settled here, high enough in the landscape that I can dig them out, the silt and stones and nutrients, and put them next to plantings here or plantings in the hedgerow. In fact, yesterday, in anticipation of the rain, I came through and I mucked out, you can see the legacy of some of it, really fine, beautiful silt that if I just had a strong cut right out to the roadway, all the way out of the property, I'd be losing this mineral and this nutrient. But by harvesting that muck and throwing it to plants that adventitiously root into muck, they get a huge amount of benefit. You can see there's muck on either side of these, uh, either side of this path of water. So ample room to plant tons and tons more. Here's a big settling spot, or relatively big. This was completely filled with soil, really fine silt soil. 
I dug that out and you can see where I <laughs> even hit the sign where the elders were. I was just basically whipping muck all the way over there to help them root better. And again, you can see in this northern berm here now, there's this really defined strip that's plantable. I've got elder, willow, poplar along the property line, elder and current family along the southern, and then in this area where we've got dominant black walnuts to the north, we'll be planting in a bunch of pawpaws and mulberries. There's already some Osage orange in there. Those are all juglone tolerant companions. But the waterway continues gently down slope with many, many interruptions. Again, you can see here's a bank of leaves up against a root, and upstream of that is rich silt. I mean, that's incredible material. If I was losing it from the land, that's erosion. But here, it's just basically capturing that, whoa, what a strange surprise. The end of December. Oh, we got a friend like that. Do you see it? No, not good. Go back to bed, please. Leave a strange. Anyway, <laughs> water keeps going. Let me move a little bit faster here. This is dragging on. On the left here, elderberries every four feet with hazelnuts in between them periodically to receive all that muck. And now I'm going to move at a slightly quicker pace just to get, get to the point here. Northern bound again on the left with the living wall of debris, a mix of living elements and a mix of decomposing elements. And you can see the water picks up speed in here which is all well and good so long as there are interruptions to capture silt intermittently and that I keep those uh, cleaned out and harvested. Continuing east and slightly north, now we get to a little area in here where every two feet is a titania black currant with grape cuttings stuck into the debris. So I went through with my hands and harvested silt and banked them up against all those little rooty stems. And after a few years of having this trench, you can see how much the microclimate is moving towards moist. Ferns and moss, all these logs are uh, elements I put down here in the last few years. So it's a really cool hydrated space that's slowly but surely actively draining the landscape. Now this is what I want to talk about for a moment. This waterway up until about an hour ago, what was happening is it came down and then I had it take a 90 degree turn to lose momentum before it dumped into this pond. But you can see that what happened is that is a lot of silt that was being cut by the water and being deposited down the bottom. So eventually this pond would fill with silt. I'd have to go in and harvest it. It's a very, very easy change here is all I did was take a rotten log and put it in this waterway and open up a minor cut to allow, you can see the flowing water is now bopping out into this plain and diffusing. So if and when we get a really heavy rain with lots and lots of soil in suspension, it can now go into a delta and fan out into this area where we've got butternuts and blue false indigo bushes planted along the pond, more heart nuts and butternuts on the north with pawpaws and gooseberries, which can all enjoy that nutrient load, that moisture, and harvesting the silt into this space rather than the silt down into there is as simple as an obstruction and a diversion. That was an incredibly long single shot, eight and a half minutes. So for those of you that are really into water and moving it through the landscape, gently uh, depositing nutrient and moisture frequently and designing proximal plants, proximity plants, that can appreciate that excess water and appreciate that inundation of nutrient. Thanks for watching. For the rest of you, sorry for the nine minute meander, <laughs> 12 minute meander. Anyway, that's the northern bound in late, uh, late 2018 in a freaky thaw. Thanks for watching.